Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Yeah. This is the Linux e-ink tablet and I've actually been sent a developer unit because I really want to try to contribute to the project. So today what we're going to do is talk about the project itself, how it is currently, what it's supported and what isn't, how is the actual device in its you know specs and such and then we're actually going to talk about what are my plans to try to improve the project, what I'm currently working on and what I will work on. So it is always a bit of a devlog as my videos usually are. So the pen note was announced roughly one year and a half ago. I remember the moment where I saw the tweet announcing it and I was like super excited about the project. The device itself is extremely appealing in my opinion. It has a 10.3 inches anti-glare e-ink display, 2 and 26 dpi. It uses a quad-core RK3566, which is actually the same chip that will be, in theory, in the Pine Tab 2, which is pretty nice. Basically, this thing is as powerful as an actual tablet. It does have front light and it has both hot and cold front lights. Maybe if it's late, you'll prefer the hot one, otherwise the, the cold one depends on what you're trying to do. And then it has, you know, microphones, front speakers, a sensor to see if it's rotated, so it's a tablet, de facto, which can run Linux with an e-ink display, which is super cool. It does have like 4 gigabytes of RAM, which for an e-ink device is totally fine, to be honest. And I feel like the build quality of the chassis is absolutely on par with the current competition. It's very nice, it's thin, and it also comes with a cover that you can attach to it which has a super nice texture on the outside along with the Pine logo, which looks so cool. Fun fact, I went to university with this device to try it out and somebody actually recognized Pine64 and was like, wow, I follow Pine64 and was like, wow. <laughs> By the way, there's also a pen for the display and it attaches magnetically to the tablet, but we're going to talk about that later. Currently, however, it's only an experimental device. It's not meant to be ready to use yet. And as it says in the web page, there's no default OS yet. Uh, if I understood this correctly, this does ship with an OS, which is like the factory Android image. I'm also going to talk about that. In fact, what I'm going to do is highlight how the tablet works with the factory Android image, which I think is a bit of a reference implementation on how the Linux part should be. And then I'm going to talk about how the Linux part actually works right now and what uh, should be done, I think. Okay, so first of all, the image is actually pretty powerful and well made for a e ink. It starts off with a lot of functions. The first one is note taking with support for both folders and search throughout your notes. If you do create a note, you can use like the pen with various kind of sizes and brushes, obviously, but also you can insert text pictures and you can use templates as the backgrounds. As an example, I really like the dotted one. The pen is actually quite responsive when you start writing. You can notice that there is a bit of thickness to the display glass, but so it's not like a drawing tablet, but it's absolutely fine for everyday use for most people, I would say. When you're done writing or drawing, you can share the current page as a PNG or the entire notes as a PDF. I've actually tried this. I wrote, I took some notes from a university lecture, as I said, and then I exported everything to PDF, sent it over my computer and everything worked super nicely. So it does work. Again, I've used it quite a while to see how it works because I do want to replicate that same exact functionalities in KD Plasma and Linux. So. You do get a task manager too, which actually surprised me a bit. You can basically create some tasks with some handwriting associated to it and write down which one of the tasks you have done, which is interesting. It's not something that I usually consider a core part of a e-ink tablet. However, it might be interesting for users. However, I never actually used it, so maybe not. I don't know, you tell me. By the way, it has a very nice functionality, which again should totally be replicated in Linux, in my opinion. That is, whenever you think that the screen is getting a bit noisy, because you do get that effect from, you know, A-ink devices, you can just swipe from the bottom and the screen will immediately refresh, which is nice. 
Then there is the core application of this kind of devices, in my opinion, which is reading books. There is an application to do that, and it does not distinguish between PDFs and EPUBs, which is interesting from my user point of view, because yes, it's a bit easier to convey that, you know, you just read a book. However, they actually work very differently. As an example, in EPUBs, you can actually change the themes and the text size. So I'm not too sure about this. Reading the book works nicely. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to expect. I did not test some very um, various EPUBs configurations. That was not my goal, really. You can annotate on the book right away. You just take the pen and start writing, which is super nice. You don't have to access any, you know, writing mode. So that is something that, in my opinion, should be kept. You do also get an office document section for the ink, which is interesting. However, it only has like PPTs, XLS, Docs. That that's Microsoft proprietary stuff. I'm not too interested into you know trying those out, but it does show that there is some interest in having you know a LibreOff kind of functionality in this kind of tablets, especially since you can you know connect a keyboard to it. More stuff, you can start accessing local directories. You can very easily see all your local files and external storage as well. And that works nicely. And it's a very easy way to add your books because you have to open them from this part of the device. You can also turn on the ability to install custom APKs. They work nicely. And it's actually necessary if you want to try out Linux because you do have to install Magisk to do stuff, we'll get to that. And you do also get a browser, which is also very nice. I tried to do, as an example, playing some chess games, and although the noise sometimes is a bit too much, it works very nicely, and I probably have to like change the refresh type, which you can, by the way, just sliding from the top, and you get to all the quick settings. So this is the situation around this uh, factory Android image, if I understood this correctly. And now there's the very important topic on how's Linux, because you know that that is the whole point, isn't it? So as I said, Pinot still in heavy development. There is no easy way to install Linux. You have to do a lot of work to get it. It took me roughly three to four weeks. I took like one hour every day to start, you know, the process. It was not so easy for me. I'm not super expert in these kind of things, but if I manage to, it means that you can as well. This was my reference guide. It's pretty technical. It has to be, but it's very nicely explained. And if you follow it, you should be able to understand kind of what you're doing. For me, the keyword is kind of, kind of. As an example, nicely enough, you can get into the download mode of the device just by placing the pen into a nice spot on the back of the device and then just rebooting. And then the steps are like you install a custom U-boot, you start using Magisk, you compile the custom kernel for the device, you export the firmware, you connect with a UART adapter. By the way, I somehow managed to lose that adapter and Pine64 sent another one to me. So thank you so much Pine64 for everything. <laughs> As I was saying, use that to enter with an Alpine installation and use that to resize partitions and install Arch Linux on the device. And then through Arch Linux, again, you boot that through the UART device. And when you're into Arch Linux, I mean, the hard work's done. You install Plasma, you install SS, you install SDDM. This part actually kind of works out of the box, which is nice. So I managed to log in with an actual GUI. So how's the experience? Well, out of the box, of course, you do have some issues. As an example, the screen refresh is terrible, but that's not surprise considering that I literally didn't do anything yet. I haven't disabled animations and you still get Plasma trying to draw all the colors and gradients. It shouldn't be doing that. So that's to be addressed. But I was actually surprised by most of the stuff actually works nicely. As an example, you can easily change the brightness of the cold and hot lights. Of course, you have to use the terminal to do that, but you can. You can also change the refresh modes. That is, you have to do that to keep a balance between the quality of the image and how fast the screen refreshes. You 
have to choose between the two. Of course, still only using a Linux command, obviously. Wi-Fi works, Bluetooth works, basically I can just plug in my keyboard and mouse and just start working. And at this point you might ask like, work on what? What are you going to do with the device? So let's talk about what I'm going to do and kind of the future that I personally see for this image. Again, I received this as a development unit, so that's my main goal. And the first thing I did quite a while ago actually was to make a plasma theme, just like, you know, Breeze for the desktop that only uses black and white. That should make stuff easier on a ink display. You still get, you know, grayscale gradients, but those might slow down the refresh rate. So white and gray it is. Of course, you can also change the color scheme to having just like, you know, white and blacks depending on the application that will be respected, not just in the plasma theme, but in the applications as well. But I still have to see how well that works, how well that works, because obviously you cannot just like change completely the look of an application just using the color scheme. So it's to be seen. Also, just having a plasma theme that is black and white won't help that much. You actually need a shell that is not plasma desktop, obviously, to run on these kind of devices. Personally, I wanted to see how plasma mobile works on this. So that's what I'm going to be testing. If it doesn't fit well, then we can actually just write. I, I can actually just write a new shell similarly to plasma mobile, like plasma ink to work on this tablet. And, you know, in that case, I would quite use the Android image as a reference. Like you would have a note taking application immediately in your face and then like a book application with immediately your library, this kind of things. Another thing that I would like to do is make an applet to change between the screen brightnesses, you know, hot and cold ones, and also between the screen refresh rates, because I've seen that it is very, very common for powerful ink displays to allow the user to override an application request for a specific refresh type. And uh, I think it makes sense. Like sometimes you want a screen, uh, a faster refresh rate, other times you want better image quality. Although at the same time, obviously the apps themselves should like ask for uh, different refresh rates depending on the use cases of those applications. So it's a bit of a balance. Then obviously we've got the applications. So what applications could be used in this device? So for note taking, my first guess would be Xorno++. I don't know if you know the application. It is a very good note taking application for Linux. It's the one that I use to take notes actually. And it already supports like everything. So there, there's nothing we should do to, to do that. Of course, you still have to see if you can make sure that Xornal works nicely on a ink device, which is not obvious, but it's something that could be done. Alternatively, and this is also very interesting, there is a minimal uh, proof of concept, I think, application uh, to note take done with Kurigami for KD Plasma. So that is also very much an option. And you know, the fact that you have an application made by KD Plasma developers, uh, Carol, I think, makes sure that you can actually change it and adapt it to the device. For drawing, I think a super nice thing would be to have Krita, because I mean, why not? I mean, KD has Krita, why shouldn't we put Krita on a device with a pen? I don't see any reason not to. Of course, Krita is not made for A-Ink devices, so I should probably look for, you know, ways to integrate Krita into this functionality. I'll probably, I don't know, ask for advice to the Krita developers, this kind of things, but it's more um, later on my to-do list. Regarding PDF reading, again, I do want to make a distinction between PDF and EPUBs. They work very different, differently. With PDFs, there's Ocular, which I think works very nicely. Again, you do have to adapt it in certain ways. As an example, a single tap should be enough to switch to the next page, but it already works rather well and it supports annotations. So it's a great starting point. And then finally, there are EPUBs, which again, super important for a uh, ink reader. I do expect people to read books on this kind of devices. I did. <laughs> So how's the EPUB situation in KDE? So there is Ocular, which has optional support for EPUBs, but it uses a very old library and it's not very good at all. 
And even if it used a better library, Ocular is not made to read EPUBs, like you do need a different concept because again, they're very different things. You can, as an example, change the style, the font size, those kind of things. So I started an application called Arianna to read EPUBs and it uses the EPUB uh, JS library. And then nicely enough, Carl uh, helped me out on porting like help me out is quite a, the understatement. I don't think there's any line of code that I wrote and is still there. So, but, but still, still, I came up with the name. So <laughs> I've done a video about the development of Ariana, but from then the application changed completely. Now it's much better again. Thanks Carl. And it should be able to cover most EPUB use cases. It still needs some stuff. As an example, you still don't have the ability to change text and themes. I've talked about this many times and touch support should be improved as well. And then you have the whole note taking part, which isn't, which isn't implemented yet, but you know, those things can be implemented. Now there's a good base to start working on and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that Ariana runs on these things and runs well. So yeah, my current goal is make sure that Ariana works nicely, adapt it to the A-Ink devices, see how Plasma Mobile works and maybe do like a shell for this kind of device, implement some nice things for the ink as an example, the ability to change the brightness, that's pretty important. And then start see how various different applications could benefit like could be ported to work on such a device. Something that I completely forgot to do before, I usually do it mid through the videos, is to remind all you people that I am not hired by KD actually. I do these things on my free time, you could say, but mostly I you know, consider this my part-time job thanks to the donation that I receive through the channel. So my goal is to reach 700 euros a month. And thanks to the donation in the previous days, we we're getting closer and closer. So if you're able to chip in something, it would be awesome if we manage to reach the goal even this month. I do have like Patreon, PayPal, uh, Ko-Fi, LibraPay, YouTube memberships, anything. Anything is awesome. So if you can help me out, that'd be awesome. If you cannot, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just, you know, trying my best here and see how it goes. So thanks everybody for following and, and as always in a couple of days, you'll get a new video from me. Bye.